And now, ladies and gentlemen of the old world, we're here with episode one of our Altharian the Grim campaign. And how Fatman certainly has some grudges to settle with the thickest of goblins, Grom the Paunch. I'm very excited to jump into this one. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what Avres brings to the table. So firstly, he has access to the Dungeons of Athel Tomorrow. So these uh, essentially give you the ability to capture enemy lords in battle. And it's a really fun mechanic. You actually get a snare ability. It's an army ability. You snare them, and if you take them out or wound them during the duration of that snare, they become imprisoned. And you have a couple options. You can interrogate them, you can execute them, or you can send them as a double agent back to their faction. It's pretty funny to imagine like Eltharian like actually turning like a greenskin war boss or something like that. I don't know. It doesn't seem possible, but I guess it is. He can also spread the Mist of Ivresk, cloaking Eltharian in his allies' lands and a defensive shroud. So very excited to try that. And of course, you know, you're not going to have too many diplomatic relations with Greenskins as is their, you know, they're the eternal foe of Ivress. So we're not going to be getting any of that fun uh, diplomacy with the Greenskins. Recruit rank for Spear Infantry and Rangers. So normally High Elf campaigns, from what I've seen, are very dependent on just massing archers. And we will go archers in the late game. But in the beginning, I'm going to try my best to show you guys all the new units. And that's one of the main reasons why we're going to be playing on very hard instead of legendary, just so I can use rangers and some units that might be slightly suboptimal to make it a more enjoyable experience. So recruit rank for spear infantry and rangers. He's also immune to uh, barren wasteland attrition. So his other armies aren't going to have this, but he does. So for example, if you want to go down to the south and give Grom the business, you know, before the final battle arises, you can do that. Leadership for spear and rangers, melee defense for spear and ranger units, and uh, causes fear when fighting against Greenskin for his entire army. So that's pretty cool for sure. He does start with the war lines of Trace here. So pretty good uh, loyal Aslan hounds here. They uh, are very good for getting into the back line. They're also pretty good against infantry. It's really nice to have like a single mobile unit like this in the early campaign. He does also start with the Arcane Phoenix, which is just the heavy hitter. This thing is great. It's fast, it's armor piercing, it causes fear, it causes terror. Its vortex is extremely good. It's like getting a free like Flamestorm basically, and it has three charges. We also start with the Silver and Guard. These guys charge fence against all anti-large. A very, very solid unit for sure. Uh, 75 armor in campaign. This is going to be a nice early game boon to just hold back those greenskin rushes and their waz. And of course he has Intrigue, uh, he has Espionage with Trade Agreements, Martial Prowess, all that sort of good stuff that you see in the High Elf campaigns. And that is going to be it. So let us jump in and see if we can hold back the girthy mass of the paunch. The waystones that guard all elven souls grow faint. Althuan is weak, still reeling from a ferocious greenskin assault. It barely survived. The Grim Warden of Tor Ivres has not rested since driving back the green invasion. Prince Eltharion must be prepared. There will come a day when the Goblin King returns. It is only a matter of time. For in the desolate Southlands, a war of unimaginable power broods. Warboss Grom, most feared and most colossal of all goblins, has long craved a second chance to annihilate the Asa. That time is now. Althuan will drown beneath a green tide. There must come the war to end all wars. But Grom's horde will meet a wall of unstoppable Asur might. Eltharion will defend his homeland unto his dying breath. This is his vow. The Grim Prince and the Goblin King, two souls sworn to vengeance upon each other. And so begins the Warden's Defense of Ulthwan. So let's go ahead and take a look at how Ivress and Eltharian the Grim play. So Ivress's rune Inner Sanctum allows you to train highly skilled Miststalker units and detain dangerous enemy characters captured in battle by use of the Warden's Cage ability or by chance in auto-resolve battles. Upgrading Athel Tamar's facilities requires Warden supplies obtained by carrying out prisoner actions or inducting characters into your Mistalker ranks. So up here you can see we currently have five of the Warden supplies, and you can see the different means through which you can attain these. Mistalker candidates, which is essentially if you have a Noble or a Loremaster of Hoth or any character, it can be a Mage, whatever, you level them up to a certain point, and it gives you the option to turn them into a Mistalker candidate. At that point, you get a couple different options. They can become a Sentinel, and you guys will see that when we do get to that point in the campaign, but basically, it's another kind of level up option for your character, and it does also grant you Warden Supplies. 
The next way to do this is with indoctrinated prisoners. So you'll see in a minute, we can capture this Greenskin Warboss here. It does require a little bit of finesse as they can be. It's like capturing Pokemon, basically. You have to throw the Pokemon ball, uh, ball at the right time when they're a little bit beat up and actually take them out. It very much is Pokemon, actually, when I think about it. But basically, you capture them, you can either execute them or you can indoctrinate them. We'll get into all that once we do uh, get into that in the campaign. But nonetheless, you can indoctrinate these bad boys, which sends them back to their faction. You get gold, you get line of sight. It's very cool. It's kind of like having an undercity in a way. You can also get it by destroying, uh, destroying Greenskin settlements, completing objectives. And there's a bunch of like submissions here, which do, of course, grant you warden supplies or executing the prisoners. There also is another way here, and I don't know if it's given us the quest quite yet. Yes, it has. So you can see here we have three kind of sub goals here in this campaign. One of them is to capture Galbaraz in the south. And if you do this, it grants you constant warden supply. So you get one every single turn, and you also get increased unit capacity for the unique Mistocker units. You also get public order for all provinces, which makes your crusades a little bit easier because if you're expanding in foreign territory, it helps keep that public order going a little bit better. We also have one for Karak Orud, and we have one for Spectazuma, which is actually all the way over into the east. And uh, yeah, that's, or the west, excuse me. It's a little bit tricky to pull off. And you can click here. We can see Galbras is down here. We have another one for the next territory, which is Karak Arud. Let me show you this. Oh no, it's giving me all these like missions here. You can see Karak Arud is down here. That is the next one. Then we have the Jungle Purge, which is over in Spectazuma which is probably the hardest one, honestly. The uh, the other two over here, you can get down there pretty quick. It's just like a little sail from your southern peninsula, but other ones are a little bit trickier. But nonetheless, we do have the Warden Supplies and the Mist of Avres. So the Mist of Avres, you can see up here at the top, Avres's defense level is currently at five. So once you get it up here, which requires 25, and we're at five right now, so we need to get 20 more, a Mist Aura spreads over your lands. So to see this, you basically just mouse over the territory of Tor of Res here, and you'll see there's currently nothing going on. But once we do get to the first defense level here in this campaign, it spreads the Mists of Avres through the Tor of Res region. So that's just this region right here, and just this province of Northern of Res. Once you do this, it allows you to summon the Sentinels in this region. It gives you some cool army abilities, and it also does attrition to invading armies. So if there's hostile armies, rebellions, uh, Norskins, you name it, they're going to be taking damage here at Tier 1. And the Mist is leveled up as well, and the Mist is leveled up by, uh, if you take a look here, by the Blessings Gained, Athel Tamar's Upgrades, or the Avres Settlement. So you can upgrade your main defense level by either upgrading Tor of Res here, and just kind of, you know, pumping up the jams, getting it to 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's go and click this off here. So just by getting it up to the higher tiers. Or you can also upgrade it by upgrading Athel Tamara, which is the next thing we're going to be taking a look at. So this is the prison here, you can see in the center, and this is where if we capture a Greenskin Warlord, they're going to be in prison here and we'll get our tactical options with how to upgrade them. There's a multitude of upgrades here as well. This one here, the Rune Mistalker Command, allows us to recruit Mistalker units. So you can see here, it unlocks the Mistalker building chain, allowing us to recruit them, and also gives us blessings. So you can see each of these upgrades here, regardless of what we're clicking on, it's going to be giving us a plus five of Lodriel's Blessing. Now, if we go back up here, you can see that is actually one of the prerequisites to upgrade. So the Blessing here is added to your defense level, and that is basically how you get this party started. You can see the Lodriel's Blessing is 25 and 49. So the faster you upgrade your city, the more defense level you get, and the quicker you can basically fight Grand de Ponch, which is always a good time. So if we continue to look at the prison here, you can see we do have the Mistalker's uh, Rune Mistalker command post, which can be upgraded to give us uh, access to that building chain to recruit Mistalker units, which we'll go over in just a minute. Tier 2 basically just gives recruit rank. Down here, we have the Rune Training Grounds, which buffs up the melee variants of the Mistalker units, and again, gives us more recruitment capacity for the Faith Bearers. Next, we have the Archery Range, which gives us pretty much all the other ones, the Skyhawks, the Sentinels, the Spire Guard, which are basically super juiced up, uh, uh, Lord, not Loremaster the Poeth, but the uh, Lothern Sea Guard. We also can upgrade this to just get more unit capacity. You guys are starting to see the trend. We have the Runes Halls of Aldrazor here. And if we look here, this is like a blanket upgrade for all of your units uh, in the Mistalker department. So it gives you leadership, melee attack, melee defense, and also more blessings. And again, just more stats in those same departments. Over here, we have some more neutral ones. So these ones up here, the Silent Sentinels, are all kind of focused on the Mistalker units. But down here in the bottom right, we have the Watchers of Avres. This gives you High Elf Influence per turn. This one gives you uh, yeah, more High Elf Influence per turn if you upgrade it. This one here is a Waystone. So this actually is an augmentation to your Mist of Avres. So once you get the Mist and they kind of augment your territories and give you more defensive capabilities, if you have the Waystones, it gives you another ability. So friendly armies gain additional movement range and envelop the Mist army ability, which of course we'll see later in the campaign. And again, upgrading this just gives you more goodies in that department. They also gain re uh, reduced recruitment time, all kinds of stuff to allow you to muster armies very quickly against invasion. Next here, we do have the Ruined Interrogation Chamber. This one gives you, uh, let's see, enables the ability to interrogate prisoners. Yes, yeah, so this is the one that is a really interesting mechanic. When you capture uh, a Greenskin War Boss, you can actually interrogate them and teach your Mistalker units how to do the WA. It is one of the most ridiculous things in the game, but it's hilarious. 
And each faction you capture, Lizardmen, Tomb Kings, whatever, uh, Vampire Coast, each of them have a unique interrogation trait, which you can add to your Mistalker units. You'd also have the upgrade here, and you can also uh, get an additional slot in your prison to hold two prisoners by upgrading this slot right here. But for the first one here in this campaign, we shall be upgrading the interrogation chamber. So I'm going to click this, and now... You can hear he's all he's all talking hype here. We have the ability to actually uh, interrogate our prisoners. So yeah, we're going to be trying to pump up the defenses here and get the defense level super high, at which point we will challenge Grom the Paunch. It's a really funny thing about this campaign. If you look here, uh, these are the submissions for our campaign, but you can actually challenge Grom the Paunch at any time of this campaign. So you can challenge him on turn one, turn 150. But if you don't challenge him and, and kind of uh, goad him to attack your city, he will come no matter what at turn 150. So that's kind of it. If you look at Tour of Rest here, you can see uh, also in the main Tour of Rest line, you can actually recruit the Mistalker units without having to chain simply by upgrading your main settlement. But if you want to recruit Mistalker units in other territories, like down here to the south, you do need to go to Athel Tamara here and actually upgrade the uh, the Mistalker's uh, command post, which does unlock a barracks type chain. That's enough, guys. Hopefully that gives you a basic understanding of the campaign. And now we're going to be jumping into it and having some fun. So let's go ahead and get Cavill. He's an Easter egg, actually. I'm sure he named after Henry Cavill, but let's go ahead and fix it. So he's going to be Henry Cavill. <laughs> Henry Cavill. Oh, oh man. How do, how do we want to do this? I was going to do AKA Superman, but he's going to be Henry Cavill here. Let's go ahead and throw him in the army. Yes, training indeed. Eltharian is ready. And we're going to go squash this uh, initial greenskin army. We could, of course, recruit more before we do this, but I don't think we need to. Certainly very favored in our, uh, in our likes here because we do, of course, have the mighty Arcane Phoenix and some really good characters. Let's go ahead and jump into this battle, guys, and capture some uh, mighty Warbrost prisoners. And now we're here in the battle, my friends, so let's go ahead and get these guys set up. So you can actually see we do actually have one of the unique Mistalker units. So let's jump down there and take a look. These are the most baseline of them all, the Athel Tamara Faith Bear. So they're basically sword infantry with pretty good stats. And they do, of course, have the martial prowess. So when the battle starts, they actually have 42 melee defense and 36 melee attack, 80 armor. So basically, yeah, shielded swordsman infantry, which are very, very nice. On top of that, we do have some of the new silver and guard. These guys, of course, armored spearmen with enchanted goodness, which gives them extra armor, magic resist, charge defense against all. Very, very solid against the greenskins indeed. Let's go ahead and get this going here. Get some archers set up in the back. Looks good to me. We can have a, a little bit of a mighty ducks formation. The flying V, because again, the greenskins do outnumber us. We have Eltharian and Henry Cavill down here to engage on the ground. Phoenix up here and the, not dire wolves, I'm so used to using hound units, but the war lions. We'll go ahead and gamble. Our winds of magic situation is pretty bad. And we got punished. Looks like uh, Ronald was not with us this day. So let's go ahead and start the battle. Move the lines over here. Do a little bit of fast forwarding. And for the Screenskin army, they're coming in hot with some spider hatchlings. They do also have, uh, I think, some river trolls were hiding in the trees. I wasn't 100% sure, but we'll set these guys up like this. Get the bird going over here and get the war lines in the back. So the war lines are basically just going to pounce out and uh, get on the archers as soon as we possibly can. Move up a little bit like so. Yes, good. Bait the AI forward. Get our bird ready to drop that big sweet vortex. So here's the Warden's Cage ability. It snares a hero or a lord. It does damage to them. It lowers their melee defense, their armor, and makes them so they can't move. But if you don't actually take them out in that 25% duration window, you don't get the prisoner and they get away from you, which is, uh, it's happened to be in a little bit of testing. So you gotta be pretty careful. If you guys are new, I would recommend just pausing to make sure you get everything you want on the right targets. But yeah, it's actually a pretty fun mechanic. Shoot some goblin archers firstly. Keep the uh, Aslan and his boys in the forest here. Henry Cavill, prepared to uh, exact some Superman justice on these guys for sure. Yes, there are the mighty river trolls, so those will be the primary target for our archers. And we should probably actually switch the sword infantry over here, if we can. Yeah, move the spearmen over here, because the trolls are kind of postured on that side. And the trolls will do some good damage against our Faithfarer units. Juke the ammo a little bit here with our bird. They'll be attacking in a moment. Our high elf archers will outclass them. We can also come in and just show you guys what this looks like. Because again, in this battle, we don't need to worry too much. It's a, it's one of those intro battles, right? That you're kind of designed just to karate chop. So we can fly overhead, you know, look for some orc boys here and drop drop some bows on him. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to fly right overhead and do the vortex. So he'll fly down and it does some pretty good damage. You can see for sure. It's kind of like a mini flamestorm type ability. And then he pulls back up into the sky. So you can actually escape it rather safely, which is really, really nice. So the war boss is coming in. We're going to use our hounds to kind of clean up the flanks here. They're not hounds, they're lions. Damn it. I got to get that right. And our spears have now repositioned. Granted, it looks like the trolls are going right down the center here. So we're going to go ahead and switch the archers onto the trolls. We do also have fire damage here. Henry Cavill and company can come up. Let's get these hounds in the back. We're going to get our bird to attack the trolls from the back. So these are the Silver and Guard. They're going to be really, really tanky here. We'll get our heroes going. And it looks like the war boss is going after those, which is good. So here comes the war lines in the back. And the trolls are getting melted pretty quick. We do have fire damage. And uh, Eltharian, of course, does have access to high magic. So we have Apotheosis for any healing we need. So we'll go ahead and use it on the Silver and Guard here, who are really taking the brunt of the charge. And the war line shall go around the back. 
So trolls are getting worn down slowly but surely. We can pull the big bird back now and uh, have it get some good terror routes. You can see that bombardment ability going down is one of Eltharian's unique abilities, which is incredibly strong. Now the war lines are going to feast on the souls of these units here. So let's go ahead and break the backs of these goblins, give them the good old Bane Brack break. And we'll pull our two characters over. Um, yeah, the war lines are just going ham bone here. And they can even chase down the trolls, which will be good. Very good. So now we'll pull you guys back a little bit, pull you guys back a little bit, get our two characters in group four, have them start going after the orc war boss. So this is where we're going to start posturing up to actually capture him. You got to be careful. It's straight up Pokemon, guys, I'm telling you. Got some spider hatchlings here. Let's uh, make sure they don't get through. Get you guys here. The wall is now active, so things are going to get a little bit scarier. So you actually have to pay really close attention because the war boss here. I'm trying to break off the goblins to get like a full surround. And uh, Eltharian taking a little bit of damage. No, it looks like Henry Cavill is the one taking damage. So we'll heal up Superman. There he goes. And now we could use the cage ability. So we're going to go ahead and pop it right here. So we're going to get these characters going after him. He's very, very low. And we have to make sure to just alpha strike him with everything we have. Because if he escapes this, we just simply don't get it. And getting it the first time around is, is very fulfilling for sure. So how long do we have? We have a, another couple seconds here. He should get taken out. He's at zero. We've success, uh, successfully captured the war boss. Let's get our bird back up in the sky. This is a really good opportunity to actually show you guys the vortex ability. So we'll shoot here. And you can see it's it's really, really strong because he causes terror also. So it's a very powerful line breaking ability. So we need to get him back up in the sky. Let him come in here and drop the, drop the base right there. Yes, that is the juicy spot. Oh, look at that. So good. And that should honestly like tear out the rest of those guys off. And our lines in the back are just chasing down the trolls and the spider hatchlings and the archers. And uh, we should be okay here. We'll be able to chase down this army pretty easily. Looks like it is going to be army losses. So I'm going to do some cleanup here, guys. Just chase down some of these units. And we'll see you guys on the campaign uh, campaign map in just a moment. And the battle is won. A decisive victory indeed. So let's go ahead and force the labor to heal up some of our troops so we can be a little bit more aggressive here. Certainly going to go auto resolve on their faces here. And Eltharian has leveled up, so we're going to get Route Marcher for him. I'm going to make him more of a blue tree guy because we have Henry Cavill for the magic. And high magic is okay, for sure, but we have the healing. The only other spell we'll want in the late game is probably Fiery Convocation. But aside from that, we're going to be going down the uh, blue tree here. And once we go blue tree, uh, we're going to be going Storm of Blades at level 12. Break Upon the Walls here does give armor for shielded units and uh, missile volleys. Wall Warden is his other unique ability, which gives plus 15 armor to all units when defending. So suddenly your Silver and Guard are going to have like close to 90 armor, construction costs, cost reduction, all kinds of cool stuff. We have a World Asunder, which uh, gives public order in uh, local provinces to enemies, it looks like. Public order, local province. Huh. No wonder being, no being is above suspicion. All right, so this is interesting. So it looks like it actually punishes your local region, perhaps. Hard to say. Uh, Unyielding March does give us campaign movement range, recruitment costs, global recruitment. Because you saw the subquests in the beginning of the campaign, oftentimes you're going to be like in foreign lands just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. We have Grim Discipline as well, which uh, replaces... Yeah, you, so you get basically just a better version of martial uh, mastery there. And this is dedicated to Lodriel. So this is the one that actually uh, buffs up your Mistdocker units even further. All right, cool. So Henry Cavill is going to be our caster, but firstly, we're going to get uh, training. Just might as well get that early to get those uh, chevrons on our level units. We'll go ahead and take out the screen skin here. There's no leader anymore, so we don't really need to worry about going in and capturing anyone. And we'll uh, take the money for now. That's fine. Although maybe taking the experience would have been a little bit better. So from here, we want to take out and kind of secure our regions. We have Sardineth up here, which we'll be trying to get the gold mine going. But now let's take a look at our prisoner options. So we can interrogate him. If we interrogate him, it gives the ability to mirror the wall, which only affects Mistalker units. So our single faith bearer in our army would have the wall ability. It is so hilarious. But in this case, that's not really worth it. If we indoctrinate him, it sends him back to his faction and gives us line of sight. But there's not really much of his faction here. I suppose he's got some stuff going on down there, which could be interesting to give us line of sight. So maybe indoctrinating him might not be bad. Executing does give more raw uh, experience to Eltharian and also just, uh, I believe, better influence. But this one gives us influence, uh, gives us warden supplies, and gives us 5% uh, of their treasury, which is not great, but if you capture like a Malekith type character and send it back after a peace treaty, you can make a lot of money on that. In this case though, we'll, uh, hmm, the experience for Eltharian is quite tempting, but I'm just gonna show you guys, we're gonna do the indoctrinate. So now we have three supply, you can see that gave us some uh, some of that. We also have vision of the uh, factions. You can see here, we can see what's going on down there at their capital, where that character will be. So our rest is leveled up also, so uh, not leveled up, but we probably want to get growth here ASAP. So growth is down on this side. Uh, we could upgrade this for Lothar and Seaguard. Might as well. Screw it. So from here, we're going to go into March Dance. Okay, make sure we get across the river because I want to make sure I can reach that next turn. But yeah, it looks like Eltharian needs to be leveled up again. So um, recruitment cost probably isn't terrible. Merchant Lord for additional tradable resources. Public order. Yeah, we'll just go for this for now. 
we're, we're going to get that and get the recruitment because we're going to be recruiting, you know, expensive Mistalker units. Henry Cavill is going to work down the magic tree for now and be our wizard with like earth blood and different variables like that. And uh, yes, again, if we go into March Dance, we can get across the river. We should be able to hit that next turn. And everything looks good. That is the first turn, guys. We will see you in the next one. We're back in business. Something I forgot to do in the first turn is some diplomacy. So let's go ahead and see who will trade with us. Clothic. Let's see if we can get a non-aggression with them. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like there's really anyone else who wants to trade with us at this point. Probably have to discover more of our lovely neighbors. And we'll uh, be good to go. So now we're here. So this is a settlement that we need to capture. Probably do a very easy auto-resolve because there's nothing worth capturing there. So we will auto-resolve that. So we've got a banner. I'll put that on Henry Cavill. It's fine. And we will occupy this. Now, it is a greenskin settlement, so we could actually destroy it to get additional warden supplies and also get the arrest avenged trait, which is pretty good. But in this case, we want to occupy it because it is part of our initial settlements. Upgrade our growth structures, and now it's time to recruit. So let's get a couple rangers, show you guys them in action. Normally, of course, I would spam archers in a half campaign, but it's a little bit different. Hey, look at that. We captured this, and we did get the warden supply. So now we have another upgrade option. So the Mistalker stuff is cool. But we don't really have the infrastructure to recruit them or build that tech right now. So what we're going to do is actually get the Ruined Shrine to Loic. This will give us one influence per turn, which will help us get a little bit closer to getting those good High Elf characters. As you know, you can really only recruit good High Elf Lords with influence. So let's upgrade the Shrine to Loic there. That does also raise our defense level, which is currently now 15, very close to the 25. We should be able to get it here in this episode. And High Elf Carl Franz is leveled up again. So let's get the recruitment cost reduction. Henry Cavill has leveled up as well. So Earthblood is going to be, you know what, maybe I should have gotten the other one, gotten the, uh, what's it called? Spirit Leech to be more effective at actually capturing those guys. But nonetheless, we'll go for growth. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So no diplomacy for us for now. We're going to be heading to the south. We certainly have some goblins and, you know, trolls down there to deal with. And also we have Aranus Assault Spites people down here. So we need to deal with her because she starts raiding your borders and uh, it's really not fun. All right, so we got a research of technology here. So we're going to go to military advancements, obviously, and get that going. Maintain at least 10 public order. All right, well, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> no promises. Tor of Rest will grow in due time. And we're just going to kind of move and keep recruiting for now. So we have the Ranger units. He does have the benefit of getting the recruitment rank to Rangers, which is nice. We're going to head down to the south. And uh, for now, we probably just want to get some Archer units. Other and Seaguard are good, but they have a relatively expensive upkeep. Let's get some standard Archers. Just kind of keep it simple. So Tor of Rest, once we do get it to our tier two here, which won't take too long, we will be able to recruit some of the Mistalker units. The upgrade for the Mistalker units here, the uh, compound, I believe, is only necessary for recruiting them and building their tech in nearby territories. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next turn. Wish us luck. So here we are. We got some more Warden Supplies and Influence, which is nice. And for now, we'll go ahead and get... Yeah, we'll just get the basic one. Weapon Strength for High Elf Spearmen and Lothar and Sea Guard, some of those other units. Uh, we'll move down here. I will recruit some Lothar and Sea Guard here because we're going to be getting a ton of money from taking out these rep factions. So I figure kind of the sacrifice to get some uh, better quality units will be good. All right, so that looks good to me. We uh, want to upgrade Sardineth first, uh, for sure, because it has a gold mine. So getting that to tier two will be a very, very nice boon for us. Granted, uh, how are we doing here? Yeah, looks like we got a little bit of time there. So let's get that gold mine going first before rushing to tier two. I think that's going to be the right play. Uh, any other diplomacy, anyone we've discovered? We do have some more trading. Ah, oh, there we go. So now we can try and get some goodies going with Tyrion. Try the trade agreement. See if he'll just go for just a trade agreement. There we go. All right, Tyrion. You know what's up. Any other trade we want? We already have trade with them. Is there... Who else do we want? Safri. How are you saying I'm no friend? I'm the warden. Come on, give me some love here. That's fine for now. We got the trades we want. And uh, yeah, we'll be uh, going after the greenskins here in the next turn. We're back in business. Uh, oh, yeah, it's Grebit. So the reason why we have line of sight here is because this is our indoctrinated dude. If we actually look at our economy, can we see trade taxes total? I don't know if it actually shows. Anyways, uh, Tral, yeah. Trilinia has leveled up, so we'll get that going. Because getting walls with Tor of Rest is, like, super important. You get harassed so hard from the coast by Norska. I actually played a couple turns of the campaign, and, yeah, you, you really got to be prepared there. So uh, this is a siege battle. The garrison doesn't look that scary. We do have the Phoenix. Phoenix is really powerful in Siege Elements, so we'll go ahead and just attack this. We should be fine. We have, we have Henry Cavill. He can fly over the walls and solo their whole army. All right, so you can see they have some River Trolls. We'll uh, build some Siege Equipment, so let's go ahead and get the uh, Battering Ram here. We don't have Siege Attacker on anyone in our army at the moment. We'll build that, and we should be able to hit it next turn. Tor of Rest, Public Order isn't the best, but once we do level some of these up, we can get the Public Order infrastructure to make sure that things are all stable in the realm. Now for technology or trading, Safri. Let's see if we can get non-aggression packs. I think I tried that last turn, but is there anyone else? Illyrian. These guys are just not chill at all. 
All right, well, there you have it, my friends. We'll be taking the uh, Greenskin City here in the next turn. Looks like a Sartosa agent is here. So, uh, Maddie Butters. <laughs> Butters always reminds me of South Park. All right, so we'll go ahead and attack the city now. Should be a pretty easy battle, but we'll, we'll show it. It'll, it'll actually be fun. You'll get to see the efficiency of the Phoenix and some of the other troops we have. And hopefully we can uh, squash these gits and, uh, you know, get some vengeance for uh, the High Elf people. And here we are in the siege battle. So currently we do have our Faith Bearers, which are equipped to the battering ram. So I think I'm actually going to drop them off it. Because again, they're a pretty valuable unit. We'll put some Rangers on it. That'll be fine. And Rangers are pretty squishy to missile fire, but I I'd rather them take the beating than our more elite troops. So we have a ton of archers, obviously. That's really the kind of core of our army here. But we do have some decent melee. Eltharion the Grim and Henry Cavill will climb the walls. We'll get our Lothar and Seaguard and archers. So we'll get two rows of archers here. Two and three. Have those guys scoot up. And we're going to pressure this kind of weak side here. Obviously, we don't want to take too much tower fire. Um, you can kind of be over here and go at more of an angle. We'll get the bird, get the lions, and get you in six. So the lions, we can actually do something interesting with. We can put them over here and have them sneak around and bash through that gate. They actually take out the gates pretty quick, which is really funny. But start deployment, start battle. We'll get the rangers going. You see we do have the warden's cage, which we will be trying to capture some prisoners here. Let's move you guys up. Move you guys up like so. And you guys can move like right here. So we'll start hammering the walls pretty good. We'll get our phoenix. Fly you over here. I forgot to redeploy him, but he can juke those shots pretty easily. We'll get the lions uh, running across here because they can break through and have enough mass to really cause some problems. All right, so the siege battle is underway. Our troops shall kind of uh, scurry under the walls here. We want to make sure we're only taking fire from one of those towers. Granted, some of the archers might just have to take the beating. We'll get our phoenix up on the wall. Uh, I believe it's mostly orc, air boys, and goblin archers. So we can hammer them on the approach to prevent some of the damage coming in. So let's do a little bit of juking here just to make sure we don't take too much. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of MLG multiplayer jukes. Go for those goblins. Henry Cavill and company can go climb the walls like immediately, and we'll also get some rangers climbing the walls as well. Very good. So the archers are now in reach, uh, range, but let's go ahead and square them up a little bit so they can get better shots on these guys in the center. And you guys can start uh, shooting at those river trolls over the wall. Thankfully, the river trolls can't get up on the wall and cause problems. So let's get you guys climbing here. We got the phoenix on the wall, and our lions are going for the gates. Good. The battering ram will be there soon, and we can actually send our faith bearers and other troops through there. And then once the AI gathers on top of us, we can then use our Phoenix Vortex to really do a ton of damage. But Eltharian's a pretty good combatant. You know, he's got great combat stats. Not the best AP values, but nonetheless, he's he's a hybrid character. So, uh, yeah, the Phoenix should be able to get some terror outs there. Trolls are being shot down, which is good. Exactly what I wanted. These guys can start shooting at the Orc Airboys right there. And the Rangers are taking a little bit of damage, but nothing that we should not be able to deal with. How are the Lions doing over here? We got the gate at 9%. Should be able to get there in time. Yeah, we have Apotheosis. We have healing. We have a lot of good stuff for our characters here. All right, Eltharian, let's give him the business. Henry Cavill has climbed the walls. Superman apparently uh, in his uh, disguise form, trying to hide some of his uh, abilities. All right, so the rangers should be at the gates in a moment. Orc air boys are being pounded by our archers here, which is good. High elf archer is so good. Now, obviously, you can siege, uh, cheese these siege battles really hard by just hiding your archers in the corner and just, you know, nitpicking here, but I don't think we need to. I think we'll be okay. A little bit of challenge is fun anyways. All right, so these guys are moving here. We do have an earth blood. Could pop that up in the walls here. Would like to hit both rangers. Um, hmm. I guess we could heal here. It'll it'll get the bird and you know some of those other units there. The battering ram is at the gate now. So let's move you guys away from some of the archer fire. Get you guys shooting here. The phoenix is healed. And the walls should be ours soon. Some orc boys are piling up here, but no problem. Rangers are actually quite good against orc boy type units. Do you want to send up the... Uh, Maybe we send up the Faith Bearers. Yeah, they would be pretty good in this situation. We'll send them up on the walls. These are Orc Boys. Rangers are smashing the Goblins. Rangers are smashing pretty good right here. And these guys have scooted up a little bit too close because I gave them orders to shoot at the Trolls. So let's pull them back and get those proper orders uh, back in business. All right, so the walls should be ours in a moment. Balance of power, obviously, in our favor. It was from the start. Two, and split up the Archer Fire to make sure to hit both these guys. So the gates are broken, so uh, now we can get our Silver and Guard, who are actually really well armored. We'll pull them in with some Rangers here, and uh, they can rush the main gates, and then the Phoenix can come overhead and really start to cause some problems. How is Aslan doing over here? Aslan is doing great, and the Greenskins have abandoned this, which is exactly what I want. I want to get the lines into the back and have them start to cause problems later on. Archers, any targets? We can shoot at some Orc Air Boys. Let's put them in guard mode, so they'll shoot and uh, try and carry out the orders without you know charging recklessly. All right, so the main troops are almost at the gatehouse. Get the silvering guard in there, although honestly, I don't know if we really need to. Seizing the wall seems to be the better play. Yeah, all's well. All is well in the realm. So we do have Soul Quench. Soul Quench, uh, of course, will do some decent damage to some of the bunched up troops here. Let's actually do a little bit of testing on those orc boys there. Oh, the range is really short. Could do it right here. 
Let's try it. Let's have some fun. So the Orc Warboss is actually coming up on the walls here, which is really good. Now we're going to grab some Rangers and send them in the main gates. They will take a little bit of damage, but in doing this, it allows me to position my Phoenix for a really good Flamestorm here. And yeah, the walls are slowly being crumped. Eltharian doing some good work as well. Faith Bears are now up in the walls. And the Rangers have gotten in there. So the wall is active now, so we'll send the bird over like so. And drop right there. Good. So now we can pull the Rangers back. They don't need to take unnecessary damage. We got some good roasting on those guys. And uh, yeah, very happy with that. Phoenix, anything else in the walls you want to go after? Looks like the Orc War Boss is hiding on the ground. How are the lions doing back here? Some goblins. Yeah, they can wreck goblins pretty good. So we'll send them in for the goblins for a minute. And good. So the archers still shooting. Would like to get them up on the walls if I could. Get all of you guys back. Yes. Some of the archers are like, hey, let's get in there and just go meet our doom. So the walls have fallen. So let's go ahead and rush down with everyone here. Very good. Silver and Guard can pile in as well. We get the rangers going. And the lions have definitely shreked some of the goblins. But now we have a lot of their force chasing us. So we could just pull the lions back at this point. They're a really useful unit in early game, so I don't want to just throw them away. Something stupid. All right, so Henry Cavill, uh, we need you guys to focus down the war boss here if we can. You and uh, your sidekick. <laughs> Henry Cavill is now the leader. He's the captain now, Eltharian. Archers, three position you guys. Very good. You guys are still shooting. Still shooting there. And yes, so now we're starting to get some damage on the war boss. The Phoenix is here. We'll have its vortex up relatively soon. And the lions were able to get back. So let's pull them in over here and see if we can get some freebies on those archers on the flank. Silver and guard, let's have you guys pile in. Orc boys, go here. These archers can set up here. I don't know why they're here, but I'm not going to ask questions. And how are we doing? Yeah, I really should have gotten Spirit Leech, but it's okay. Let's pull over the bird. So one or two more hits and we will pop this. He needs to be a little bit lower than this, so from my experience. Okay, he's, he's almost buttered up. Bread is almost buttered. One more hit here. Come on, give it to us. So now we pop it. Very good. I, I seriously feel like I'm playing Pokemon again, which is pretty hilarious. All right, the lions have feasted back there. Now they can go here. We did capture the war boss. It's really important to do that. And that's why in Eltharian's campaign, you're probably not going to see as many auto resolves because like how important it is to actually capture them. All right, so these archers are here. The trolls are in the back of the city. Let's move over here. A little bit of fast forwarding as we chase them through the streets. Yes, good. So now we can get our archers in here. We can get you four right here. Father and Seaguard and other archers can be back here as well. Pull you guys back. No need to have an unnecessary fight with some orc boys here. And uh, yeah, we captured the war boss, which is great. Very happy about that. We do have some Shem's Burning Gaze action. We can actually pop that on some of the trolls back here. Looks like they did heal up. Wonder if it'll take out a model. Let's go ahead and check. Oh, wow. That actually did some really good damage. Okay, cool. So archers are getting in position here. We're going to try and minimize damage. Uh, so we'll just let our melee troops kind of chase off the battlefield and use our single entities and characters. Because again, we have Apotheosis. And this is, if you really want to play the campaign in a cheesy way, or, you know, very efficient way even. Not even cheesy. I don't know if I would call it cheesy. But you can just, like, abuse your single entities really well with Eltharian's campaign. Because you have a lot of healing and really powerful, you know, obviously character here. And you can just let them blob up here. And then from there, we have Earthbloods. We have Apotheosis. We have so much good stuff. And we will get to that point where it's going to be a mostly archer army. But yeah, it's going to be quite a bit of fun. All right, so let's go ahead and get the uh, the bird the bird storm in here. The river trolls might not actually even be a factor at all. And uh, the bird. The bird is the word. Here it comes. Going to do some fat damage there. Oh, yeah. It's a really, really cool synergy. Trolls. Trolls. Bring them down. Flamesfire Phoenix can uh, fly overhead. And as soon as the trolls go down, it's probably going to trigger army losses here. Earthblood. We have a potion of toughness as well, which we'll use. And it looks like our infantry uh, are doing okay. Great. Army losses. There you have it, guys. The first siege is won. We captured our prisoner. All is well in the realm. We'll see you guys on the campaign map. A decisive victory indeed. Let's go ahead and set this up. We could sack it, but uh, I don't know if that money's worth it, to be honest. We have the same guy's prisoner. He's like, oh, you again. He's like the frequent offender that always gets picked up for something stupid. Uh, indoctrinate, execute. I mean, at this point, the faction's getting pretty bare bones. So I think what we'll do is we'll just take him out. <laughs> yeah, so grim fate for that for that green skin war boss there. So if we upgrade the prison, oh, I should have done this before, but basically you get more experience uh, each time you take out a lord, and it's for all lords leading armies. So if you have multiple stacks, uh, do we want the ruined archery, the halls? I mean, we don't really have mistalker units quite yet, so I don't know how important that is. We could get a second slot here to hold multiple prisoners, which is kind of a fun thing. So let's go ahead and upgrade that. Yeah. So now we can hold two at a time. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see if it gets to that point. We'll try. So bonded service here. 
for the recruitment because Miss Soccer units are actually really expensive. We'll get Spirit Leech as well for Henry Cavill. And we can recruit some more archers. That's probably not a bad idea. Our income isn't the best right now, but you know, we're getting there. We're about to have a gold mine coming our way. And Aranessa is lurking somewhere. Yes, here she is. So we need to corral Aranessa down here if we can. So let's go ahead and recruit a couple more archers. Should be fine. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. We'll see you guys in the next turn. All right, so we have the Invocation of Lodriel. So there's a couple things I actually wanted to show you guys, because I'm sure, you know, it's the first time a lot of people are seeing this campaign. So this is our new right. So it's the Invocation of Lodriel. So this one actually makes it so your Mist's effect, which I believe is in effect now. No, not quite. We're currently at 15. Okay, so we need to get a little bit more before we get the actual Mists. But when you do have the Mist active, uh, basically it does 200% more attrition. So you can wreck enemy armies. It's super strong. Uh, campaign movement range. You can see a bunch of penalties. It also does give you Envelop in the Mists in which you can make your characters, you know, uh, unspottable. You could get an additional ambush chance. There's lots of cool stuff for sure. So that's the invocation, which is now uh, available to us. And something, yeah, let's just go ahead and take a look. So obviously, first episode, we got to cover this. If we look here at all the Mistalker units, uh, firstly, we have the Athel Tamara Faith Bearers, which are the standard sword and board infantry with Frenzy. The next unit we have, which are really good, are the Spire Guard of Tor of Rest. They're amazing units. They're unbreakable Lather and Sea Guard. They have anti-large melee, really good range, pretty good melee combat stats, 80 armor as well. So unbreakable. Uh, what is the stockpiles effect? This unit carries an unusually high amount of ammunition. Yes, that is true for my testing. So these are the Spire Guard of Tor of Rest. <clears throat> At the next tier, we have the Skyhawks, which are Mistalker hybrid infantry. Stock, anti-infantry. Uh, they do also have penetrating projectiles. So fired by this unit have unusually high penetration for its class and pass through scores of lesser creatures. So they kind of have like a ballista type effect and yeah, they're really, really cool. So the Skyhawks, we have the Sentinels, which are just super juiced up dudes. And they're basically just even more steroided Lothran Sea Guard, charged fence against large foes, low rate of fire, but they hit very hard and they do also have Shield Breaker. So yeah, those are the Sentinels. And here up at the top, we do have the Knights of Tor Gaval. These guys are basically kind of like Royal Hippogriff Knights. 300 weapon strength is pretty insane. They only come in a unit of three, but these guys are just powerhouse characters. Certainly a lot of fun stuff on the horizon. So here we're going to go ahead and get a gold mine. Just wanted to make sure I showed you guys those in the first episode. Leave leave nothing undiscovered. So we have him in March Dance. We might be able to reach him here. Aranus Assault Spite probably sailing and trundling about. Can we reach you? It looks like we can, and I believe he's in March Dance. Hmm. Choices, choices. Choices, choices indeed. So the gold mine's going at Chalnia. We will, of course, probably get some walls because it's a very choice spot for the AI to attack. Currently, we don't really need to use that right. It does help with public order, but I think just saving the money is going to be better. I think we can reach this guy. Yeah, it looks like we can. So we're going to go down and take out this uh, Vampire Coast Lord here, but we're going to capture them so I can show you guys. All right, so normally I would auto-resolve such a battle. We do have the Flaming Banner, so let's go ahead and put this on the, the Lions. Let's give him some fire damage. But we're going to jump in, capture this pirate, just so I can show you guys the trait for Vampire Coast. So we'll see you guys in the battle in just a second. All right, guys, looks like we got we got a live one. We're just going to get our archers, and the archers are basically just going to wreck the uh, the one unit here, and then we'll get our characters and single entities to just go finish them off. Start deployment, start battle. Where art thou? Let's fight the phoenix up the hill. Certainly a very one-sided battle. I'm, I'm not going to lie about that. All right, so let's wreck these these Haggard Sartosa. Free company here. <laughs> we have some elusive prey to capture. Actually, it'll be very easy with our mass archers here, because we can basically net this guy down and just give him the business and then go in with our characters to finish him off. All right, so fast forward a little bit as we wreck those guys. So now we're going to move you up just a little bit. We can actually get the, the lions to go chase them off. <laughs> Release the lions. All right, so they're down for the count. So now we just need to move up to go after Count Chocula himself. So we'll start shooting here. They're setting up shop. <laughs> it's it's the, the ultimate sting. I have to make sure to capture him. Oh, he's actually a pistol caster. Okay, that's why he's... No, he's pull arm. Okay. I was going to say, is that why he's running? Oh, he's a, we got a runner. We got to knock him back. <laughs> we got to knock him back to the ranks. Okay, he's taking some serious damage now. We could probably honestly just net him down and finish him with... Uh... Yeah, so we're going to try and knock him back towards our dudes. Here we go. Yes, perfect. <laughs> just a haggard tide call coming in from him. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to go ahead and net this guy down. I think we should be able to finish him pretty quick here with all the archer support. So we're going to Spirit Leech him. That might have been a little bit preemptive, but I'm pretty sure he's getting wrecked pretty hard. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> we captured our prey. It's kind of a fun aspect of this campaign. <laughs> it's just like hunting the elusive Pokemon, each of which has unique battle traits. All right, guys, we'll see you on the map and we'll take a look at the Vampire Coast trait. All right, now we're back. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll just take the experience on our troops. Yeah, probably should have been doing that the whole time, to be honest. 
All right, so um, for now, we'll just get wary. It's fine. I mean, Merchant Lord's okay, but from what I understand in this campaign, the other high elves don't work with you very much. Level up training here. And now we have a couple options. We do, of course, have the Greenskins here. I would like to stamp out Aranessa because I have a feeling she's going to go north and troll my garrisons, which is very obnoxious. But let's go to our prison. So we have uh, this guy. So we can interrogate him. And it gives. it is really good because basically if you have a full stack of high elf uh, Mistalker archers, like the Spire Guard or the more elite archers, they all, every Mistalker unit in your entire faction gets extra powder. So basically you have infinite ammo. It's pretty insane for sure. I mean, it's, it's so good. So we're going to interrogate him for now. Um, just... No, normally I would release him, obviously, so I can get eyes on Aranessa and whatnot, but um, in this case, we're going to go ahead and do this just so when I fight the next battle, I can show you guys what it looks like. All right, so I think that's good. We've uh, we've caught our prey for this turn, and we'll see you guys in the next one. All right, so we got the weapon strength for our units here. Let's go ahead and get the uh, militia training, recruit rangers, and archer units. I guess that's okay for our other armies. We'll get the archer prowess. Probably should have gotten that one first, but it's okay. Prince. So up top here, we have some new building options at Tralnia. We could actually build a public order building. <sighs> That's a watchtower, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's like, I want to build the, the other stuff, you know, the more exciting stuff. But yeah, this is like the unfun part, you know. We got to do it because Aranes is going to start trolling my shores. I don't really know where she is. So it looks like the Shrine of Loic was actually taken. But um, we need to hit the Greenskins before they can gather their strength. Although I think strength is, is not what they're rocking right now. <laughs> okay, I stand corrected. So we'll attack here. Yes, execute the fiends. And then from here, we go to the Shrine of Loa and take that out. Now, if I auto-resolve this, the problem is, is I'm not going to get the captives. Uh, that's Even though it says an auto-resolve, I, I did it like 10 times with my testing before the campaign. And like, I got no one. I like never got anyone. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and jump in and fight this and capture us uh, some gobos. And here we are. Let's go ahead and get our archer wall set up. We'll just do the same thing we kind of did before. Um, we should be able to run interference with our phoenix and like our lions and stuff. The banner? For some reason, I thought the banner stayed on these guys. Yeah, they still have it. Okay. I was like, did I accidentally get rid of that? No reason to let our infantry get damaged in this particular fight. Start deployment, start battle. All right, so let's do this. So our archers can go ahead and set up shop here. We're going to have range in a moment. Get the war lines out on the flank here. And it looks like some reinforcements are coming. All right, perfect. So the archers should be able to Shrek the entire army very, very quickly. Uh, Winds of Magic situation isn't great. It's not a problem. And now they're in range. So the High Elf Archer Salvo shall be unleashed. The full might of the fully operational operational Death Star. Come, War Lions. See, there's a pretty choice one. That's a Night Goblin War Boss. He's a little bit tougher to capture because oh, he's, he's a combat character. The caster certainly would be a little bit easier. So you guys shooting here. Everyone's shooting. We're all good. We'll get the War Lions around the back and pull the Phoenix in now to attack the archers, I think. Yeah. Let's take out these Orc Boys. Looks good. All right. So let's get the War Lions back there as well. We're pulling them back. You guys can go here. And, uh, yeah, I guess we could apotheosis the phoenix once it takes a little bit of damage, but that's all in due time. Get the lions over there on that other group here. Might be able to bunker bust these guys real quick. All right, so they're taken out. Very good. Let's go ahead and Tokyo Drift over here and see if we can hit those guys. Archers are just shooting happily. Shoot those orc boys. Get a better concave right here. And we do have the big old awesome phoenix vortex. And you can see, actually, uh, Eltharian does have his own vortex, which is quite cool. Earth blood there. Do a nice little vortex on these guys. Boom. War lines. War lines are really cool. Right? They're like more powerful than hound units, which makes them like really decent in mainline combat too, compared to uh, you know those type of units. We got the war boss back here. The bird is just shrieking angrily. Come on. Wow, really giving those guys immune to psych is pretty good. So we'll go after the caster now. Should be able to hammer them down. Let's get the war lines back. Because we don't want them to uh, take too much damage if they don't have to. Shoot you guys. Shoot you guys. You guys go after these archers back here. And where, oh, where is that little war boss? Here he is. Time to butter some of that goblin bread. So we'll save the spirit leech for the uh, the death thrust here. We could honestly probably cage him now and still take him out in the, the appropriate window. But we'll just play it safe. So the war boss is coming. Um, could actually punt him with the other character. Ah, I'd rather keep it here. We get the lions going after that little war boss. These archers can shoot you. And uh, yeah, great. So this guy's a little, he's a little quick, so we're going to actually have to cage him down now, I think. We'll uh, spirit leech him. That'll help us finish him a little bit quicker. Yeah, he, we should be able to get him in the window. And you can see the war lines actually have enough mass to really do a lot of damage. How's he doing on HP? Should be down for the count. Very good. We've ca captured our prey. 
Uh, so everything else we don't really need to worry too much about. So uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the campaign map with our new prisoner. Back in business once again. City is ours. Let's go ahead and uh, occupy that bad boy. Yeah, maybe I should have taken out that other goblin there. So now I can't reach him. He is taking attrition though, so uh, he'll probably just run to his demise. So um, now we have two of two. So we have this prisoner, we have the green skin prisoner. So we could actually have Wah and extra powder. Uh, for him though, I'm just going to actually execute him to get the experience and get the warden supply so he can upgrade more. And we'll keep the powder character for now because that could be useful at some point. All right, so here we're going to get Draft Master, recruit rank for all units, which is really, really good for Eltharian. Recruiting like globally with him is one of the most important aspects of this campaign in my anecdotal experience. Uh, Spirit Leech gives us a uh, cooldown. Earthblood, yeah, let's get another Spirit Leech. All right, so up at the main city, Tower of Rest is current surplus. We almost have enough. Probably have to save some money for that. The gold mine finishing will really help our economy quite a bit. I don't know where Aranessa went. That's my concern. If she goes to our coast, we're going to have to recruit a lord to try and stop her, which uh, will probably be my game plan. We don't currently have the mist yet. Our current total is uh, 15, so we're getting there. Yeah, hopefully we'll get it in the next couple turns. Yeah, obviously we have a ton of quests. Destroy Arachnos. Yeah, we need to finish them off. Okay. Get an archive, which we'll be getting pretty soon. The archive is very important because it gives you tier 2 uh, military tech for the Hiles. All right, and yeah, our, one of our first things is going to be going and leaving this territory and actually going to the Badlands, which will probably be in the next episode. All right, guys, and now we're back. They did actually attack, so I'm actually going to do this on my own. I'm going to jump in and capture this goblin because the auto resolve is kind of wasting the potential here. So I'll jump in, capture him, and we'll get this uh, turn going. All right, guys, see you when it's over. All right, so we've captured the slippery goblin, although I'm not sure since he's the last unit in his faction if it actually lets me keep him. We'll have to check in a second, but I did capture him, so let's go ahead and find out right now. Looks like we, yeah, we only have one prisoner. So actually, if a faction is destroyed, and something we learned today, uh, apparently you don't get to keep all the goodies. So we do have the Elven Trinkets here, which is fine. And the quest is issued, so currently get two provinces, and I get the Helm of Avress. Okay, so it's not a quest battle per se, but if I just complete and hold two provinces, which we should close out this episode with, uh, you actually get a pretty cool item. So Lightning Strike's okay. We're not in a situation in which we need that, so I'm just going to go for the upkeep. Again, economy is all. I'm not going to waste any points on his early mounts because just saving up for Stormwing and his big big pop of Steed is going to be the way to go. All right, so he is just about ready. There's a High Elf Rebellion down here, which will go squash. So we're just going to move down there, check for Aranessa, make sure she's not trembling on my coast at all. Uh, and Tor of Rest will have growth soon enough. Next turn, we'll be able to get to, to Tier 2. So uh, I believe I have enough Warden Supplies, so I'm actually going to upgrade this right now, the Mistalker Post, so we can recruit those troops in other territories. But if you're playing your own campaign, I wouldn't recommend this. The reason why I'm doing this is just to show you right now. So we're going to do this. It's upgraded. And our defense level is now 20 of 25, so we should be able to get that soon. But now if we go to the building tech, it's around here somewhere. Let me go ahead and find this bad boy. You can see we have the Mistalker Sanctum. Now this one actually gives you untainted recruitment uh, reduction for those units and we can get all the units that we showed you earlier in this region. So there you have it guys. That is the Mistalker recruitment infrastructure and uh, we should be able to complete at least secure this region. Do I want to march dance over here? Probably. Just to make sure I can get there. Even if they come at me, I mean that's a pretty weak stack so I'm not terribly concerned. And yeah, all right. We'll see you in the next turn. So Aranessa is actually here for some diplomacy. Uh, Peace Treaty is actually okay. Like, she's just like annoying. Like, we don't really care about her territories. But I'm gonna see if I can get more money out of it. Uh, demand payment. Let's even get 900. It's low. Let's go for 600. Low. Okay. <laughs> what? Wait, didn't you come and offer that? I guess she just wanted a Peace Treaty. I think she wanted us to pay her. So maybe we'll just go for a regular Peace Treaty now, just so we don't have to worry about defending our borders, because we have enough threats that come at you in this campaign. So Aranes is coming here. Uh, we'll go for a peace treaty now. Her army must be really weak. Why shouldn't I? What does it look like? I could capture Aranessa, but, you know, we can always go and do that later. Yeah, she's got 14 units. My garrisons wouldn't be able to hold, so... Uh, let's just... How dare you? Let's demand payment. Why now is it... Demand payment, yes. Moderate. Alright, so we got 500 gold. And now she's not going to be trolling our territories anymore. Might still raid, but, you know, it is what it is. So we're going to go here. I'm curious what the high elves will give you. And it looks like we do have a... Now, this will be a good... Obviously, it's a stop in an auto-resolve auto situation, right? You would want to auto-resolve this. But we're actually going to jump in and capture this hero and see if that provides some different benefits compared to lords. And this will be the last battle here of this first episode. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed so far. We'll see you on the battlefield. All right, guys, here we are. Let's go ahead and pull these guys back. 
Uh, just get the archers and a big old dirty spaghetti line. We can get our infantry in front this time, just in case they get there. Yeah, it should be fine. It's going to be a pretty easy battle, obviously. And again, the main purpose is just to try and capture this character. And our lions should be able to go back there and uh, hammer their artillery. Great. Set you guys up like this. Get Altharian and company, get the phoenix going, and get the war lines heading to the back lines. Lion on lion uh, violence here with the white lions. There's a great eagle as well. Send the bird to go take out the great eagle. Move you guys up. Just keep going. Altharian and company can go. You guys hammering them. You guys can just... I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Just move up and take things out. We should win the bird fight. We do have Spirit Leech as well, so we'll go ahead and pop that to uh, make sure it goes okay for us. The bird fight! Yes! All right, so our archers should be in range in just a moment. All right, let's hammer them. Let's hammer them. And let's hammer them down. I have to say, like, some, some armies in campaign, you know, just feel, like, fluid. Like, High Elves are one of those that, like, everything just kind of clicks. You know, I guess that's why like Tyrion's campaign and some of the other ones have always been considered to be like really easy. The units are just so good and now even better. Granted, this campaign has its challenges for sure. You guys will, you guys will see. You guys will see indeed. So the Great Eagle is actually holding its own there. So the character is back there waiting to be captured. We can get the lions in there. We could even pull in for a vortex here. All right, so now we have the character. Let's get our characters here. Get the eagle, go see if we can finish off the white lions. Get the nice little bombardment run right there. Tell our archers to uh, hold fire for now. And now, we'll put you in the in the pen. Eltharian can soul quench, but yeah, no, we need the spirit leech's character. Get the bird. You only have some time. Like, it, the first couple times I did it, I, I thought you just get them, like, but yeah. We might not get this one. No, we did get it. All right, so let's go ahead and see what this hero provides to our uh, faction. All right, so that is ours. We're certainly going to occupy it. Raising it gives us 50 gold. So we got this region. Let's go ahead. Um, we have some vampire corruption, so we can go untainted for a couple turns. Upgrade this, upgrade this. And yeah, unfortunately, since that was the last of the faction, that wasn't really worth it. Okay, that's a shame. Yeah, okay. So we've really confirmed that mechanic now. So we're going to go ahead and get Quartermaster. That'll help our income quite a bit. Henry Cavill. Is there anything really fancy we need? Probably just keep going down the magic. I mean, just Spirit Leech and Earthblood and also getting the uh, the Earthing and the uh, or the Magical Reserves is really what you want. Get Earthblood there. Very good. All right, so we've captured that. Aranessa is kind of peeling off now. And uh, yeah, now the world is our oyster. We have the Tal Talisman of Hoeth. And he should have gotten that item. Yes, the Helm of Avress. It's really, really good. Uh, basically, this is the one that makes it so your entities cannot die while they're under its effect. We got the Cloak of Beards, Leadership and Fighting Dwarves. Interesting. There's actually a cloak made out of beards. It's quite the quite the situation. All right, so we'll upgrade this and uh, upgrade our gold mine as well. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and pass the turn and see what uh, beholds us here in the future. And here we are with the next turn. Uh, so I'm thinking of actually, I'll keep playing until we get to the first effect. Because again, I want to show you guys everything here in this first episode if we can. Uh, all right, so basically, now it's like you really just have to decide. Do I want to go up north and like fight some Norskins and you know try and do my thing there? Or do I just beeline it directly to the south? You want to make sure your public order is more or less stable. When Tor of Rest does level up, we will be able to help the public order issue. See, currently here we have Growth, Untainted. Yeah, High Elves don't really have anything like other factions do in that respect. The Untainted here should be able to stabilize these lands. So I can go into the Badlands. One of our objectives is right down here, which will give us... Uh... Oh man, Aranus is within reach. It's so tempting. It's so tempting. But of course, we just made a peace treaty. And uh, military access, non-aggression pact. Do some diplomacy. Tyrion's, Tyrion's a true bro. I really wasn't expecting that. Him and Eltharian would be bros for sure, though. Is there any other trade we can kind of try and salvage here? Oh man, people are just... Like, other High Elf factions really don't like you. We could, we could trade with Aranessa. Yeah. Aranessa's uh, reign of terror was, was short-lived on us. She's now retreated to the realms from when she came. So I guess if we want to get this, Evresa's settlement level will get that. Okay, so we just need to get Evresa leveled up. We have three turns. And you know what? We could head to the Badlands. Let's go ahead and do this. So if you look here, you can see if we go into the Badlands here. Yeah. And that one is at Galbaraz, which is just right over here. So it's really not that far. So we're going to go ahead and grab our boy. The Warden Shall Crusade. And uh, yeah. We'll move for a couple turns, and if somebody invades, we should be able to get the mist and invocation and muster an army very quickly, which is a really, really fun mechanic. All right, we'll see you guys in the next turn.
All right, we're back. It just occurred to me that there's still uh, the threat of rebellion here, so we'll go ahead and level up this region and see if we can uh, stamp that up. Tour of Rest is leveling up as well. So yeah, the smart play is probably just to hang back and, and squash the uh, issues with rebellion here because it will rebel in the next couple turns. And it's going to rebel at the capital, which is over here. Hmm. I guess it looks like we need to come back because otherwise, I mean, I could recruit a character there to kind of sit and babysit, which honestly might not be bad. Yeah, we could do that for now. So do we have enough influence to actually get a good character? It looks like we do just about. So these are the Archmages. We can recruit princes and uh, different characters here. But I think getting an Archmage would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. That'll be fun. That, and then we'll have a Guardian who can like kind of guard the realm while uh, Altharian just kind of goes ham out in the different regions. So he's going to keep uh, continue heading down here. Let's make sure we have the right location. Into the Badlands is right here. All right, so let's move down here. Altharian is going. This is a little bit of an aggressive play, but I really just want to show you guys all the cool stuff. Invocation of all, no problem. So Spry, Thinker. Okay, so what kind of a caster? A fire caster would be pretty good against Greenskins. Ward save for Phoenix units. Incompetent. I believe once we get to ne the next tier too. Let's see if we have uh, better recruitment options up here. I don't think it works that way. No. Hmm, flammable. We just need to basically recruit archers. You know, it's kind of the jam. So we're just going to have a bunch of janky D archers. Fire magic primed. Wind's magic power reserve is good. That's actually pretty good. We'll get the Archmage of Fire here. Samoth. Get some archers here. And that should help uh, mitigate the rebellion. And if there is one, she should be able to go and deal with it. So this is for Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers and Tyranoc Chariots. We don't really care about those. We don't care about Reaver Cav. We'll go ahead and buff up our Lothern Sea Guard or Militia Training. Should have gotten that earlier, but it is what it is. So Altharian shall continue his uh, quest down here. So there obviously is Galbraz. It's kind of the top knots. So we need to get there if we can. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and land right here. And land on the coast. It's actually a pretty scary Savage Orc stack, but I think with our archers and some of our other units, we should be able to win it. That's not that's not a bad army. That is not a bad army. This is really going to be a, a proper scrap. You could, of course, be more patient and wait, but you know, patience isn't my jam. We got to get in there and, and do it to it. So Tor of Rest is about to finish. We could recruit some more Spearmen here to help squash the Rebellion. And is there anything up north? Yeah, we do have some public order issues here, but that should be remedied with some buildings. We'll get going soon, and we'll see you guys in the next turn. So it actually just occurred to me that I still have the Sartosan prisoner. So we're going to grab him. Oh, we already interrogated him, yes. But we want to indoctrinate him. So we're going to send him back to his faction. We get to steal 5% of the uh, faction's treasury per turn. So we're going to send him back. That also gives us eyes on Sartosa. Yes. Somehow... Apparently, uh, Eltharian is a very convincing dude. So, are we going to be able to dock here without taking any drama? We're not currently at war with the Top Knots. So, we have a relatively safe approach. They could declare war on us, though, if we full speed it. Looks like we can go, like, here. Because if we go straight through... Yeah, we'll try it out. So, we'll go straight, like this. Yeah, landing over here is probably much safer. Let's go ahead and go into March Dance. Full speed ahead. I don't think we need to. We're just gonna go ahead and do a regular move. Get as close as we can. Doesn't look like we're gonna take attrition in that little like cozy spot right there. We'll find out. If we do, we can always march away. Looks like we were. Huh. We could have sworn we were out of attrition there. All right, so we'll get on land next turn. We can actually see Cetra and some of the other, uh, you know, some of the comedy crew down there. We do have some upgrading options. And now you can see we have a Vress where we want it. Currently, uh, we have the defense level one. So we have the mists over our region. So if you mouse here, you can see the mists of Avres are now active. This region is experiencing a storm. Enemy army that moves here will suffer attrition, but it does not go down here. Once you get to higher defense levels, it actually spreads. So it spreads to all owned regions in the uh, Avres provinces. So Northern Avres and Southern Avres here as well. And once you get to tier three, it actually goes all over Ulthuan. So it's really, really neat for sure. Now here, we probably want to get a public order building. Although honestly, if I can stabilize the public order just with brute force. I could potentially just get the noble tech or the archmages. The archmages are quite nice because it does open up the tier two military research. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's tricky because the noble building is really good also. It helps with our income. It also allows us to get nobles, which are really good characters. Uh, they give replenishment to your troops and a couple other things that are really nice. So we'll have to actually feel that out. But in this case, the archmages, I mean, let's see what's going on with military too. Yeah, it's pretty good. But I mean, Tor of Rest will grow. Public order building certainly will be missed in that region. 
We could always get it in one of the other places. Ugh. I think I want the Noble. I can build this, recruit him, and then actually get rid of the building too. Just so we can actually get the Noble. I think that's actually the smart play. So currently, uh, Samoth is here, ready to deal with the Rebellion. And I think that is going to be it for the turn. So we'll land on the shore and uh, hopefully be able to complete this quest. Imminent Rebellion, which we're more than aware of. Henry Cavill has leveled up as well. So Henry is going to max out his Earthblood. And Cetra? Oh yeah, we can get some relations with Cetra. Sure. I should have asked for some money too if he was so willing, but it's all good. So we're going to land on the shore here. Very good. So the Greenskins have actually left the city, which means it's going to be a pretty easy catch for us. Uh, no other stances we really want to go into. So up north, uh, the Rebellion will come in the next turn. We have our slot here. So if we can actually get the plaza to get public order to prevent the Rebellion from just recurring over and over again, should be good. And yes, so that will be it for this episode, guys. Certainly a fun one. We were able to pretty much show you all of the new features, more or less. We saw the Mistalker units. We saw the, uh, the arrest defense level be reached. You got to see some of the prisoner mechanics. And yeah, we'll be back soon with the next episode. I'm going to be putting these out pretty much every day till we finish the campaign. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can stop the girth of the paunch from taking over all of Ulthuan.